Well, hi. Hello. Happy Tuesday. I will warn those of you of a nervous disposition. It's Tuesday and I have the dogs and Rosie is on high alert. We've already had a bark fest due to the post lady who dared to put a letter through the letterbox. And next door but one day that way, excuse me, are having new windows. So obviously workmen are coming and going, banging, tapping with their little hammers, etc, etc, whatever they do when they're putting a new window in. And to make things worse, the people across the road are having something done as well. So, you know, I will warn you in advance, if you've got a pacemaker or you're, you know, high alert like you, yeah, we're likely to get bouts and barking. Anyway, <coughs> the scooter man did come yesterday. He's left me this <laughs> very old, very battered, very knackered old scooter. A bit like its driver. So I had a very, very cold um, drive up to Fleetwood Library to the Knit Club yesterday. Because, you know, silly me didn't take a blanket and silly me didn't take a hat. I just put my earmuffs on, which normally is fine. Because normally I've got the perspex which shields me from the wind in front. But of course I'm on the old scooter with the wind, you know. And you know what it's like living by the sea. Well, you wouldn't if you lived by the sea in sunny climes. You might think how wonderful, how marvellous to live by the sea. Trust me, living by the sea in Fleetwood is not what it's cracked up to be. Anyway, uh, said scooter should arrive back again this week later on he did promise well as much as he can promise yeah so what did the post lady bring me another vintage pattern well it wouldn't be me would it this time it's Peyton's Pablo which is an extra chunky and it comes from 32 to 40 inch which I did quite like the stitch on it it's sort of like a basket weave stitch isn't it yeah basket weave so that's done in an extra chunky. And I did have some extra chunky when I was briefly in the shed yesterday. Thank you all for your offers to help. Sadly, most of you live either in Australia or the USA. <laughs> Nobody seems to live within shouting distance of me, but never mind. I used to love the encouragement I used to have from Sue and Kelly. I had a lot of help, I must say, a lot, a lot of help, because they were a bit more mobile. Well, Kelly was definitely more mobile than me. And Sue had had problems with her back, but she was definitely more mobile than I was, yeah. And I also got this one, which is Spectro, which was an emu chunky from many, many moons ago. Yeah. It's sort of done in like a broken rib design. Very nice. Again, it's chunky. Uh-huh. Well, I have done a little bit more with my dodgy fingers. I've actually started the front. You start with a pocket, which I put on. He said, put on SN. And I'm thinking, put on SN. It took me ages to work out. It meant spare, spare needle. Anyway, I put mine on a stitch holder. It's the pocket for when I get up to it. I have actually knitted the back. I know you will say, oh boy, it looks short. But it's got, um, if you remember the pattern. I'm not showing you the pattern. It's somewhere around. It's got a waistband on it. So it does look quite short. But I do like the pattern stitch. It's two rows of knit one pearl one rib and then it's a pearl row and a knit row which gives you that nice ridgy pattern. Yeah. I'm a bit like Sheila, I like an easy pattern. <laughs> one that doesn't tax the old brain box, yeah. Hmm. Oh, and I've got my crochet hook came from America. It's a Susan Bates with a, a soft loom handle, ergonomic, yeah. This is the one I use. I always think it's such a shame that everything is online or even if you go into a physical shop, everything is packaged. Yeah, this one isn't so bad because you could actually, you know. What you need is if you go to a knit club, don't be afraid to ask people. Can I just have a little go at your crochet hook, please? Yeah, take a spare ball of wool with you. And then, you know, you would be able to test which hook suits your hand, suits the way you crochet. Because there isn't one hook suits all. You know, there just isn't. Some people 
like the ergonomics, some people like the ones with what I call the blob end, some people like the inline end, other people like a soft grip, other people don't. Some people like those big knobbly handles, other people don't, you know. And the ones with the big, like a tennis ball, you know, the supposed to, I could never crochet with that, but some people can. But wouldn't it be nice if you could, theoretically speaking, sort of test out each hook before you bought, you know. And then, of course, once you found the one that suits you, you could buy it in all sizes. I must have spent literally hundreds of pounds over the years buying crochet hooks that I've had to give away because I just couldn't use them. They just didn't suit the, the way I crochet, you know. As we, we all crochet differently. And I am never going to say to somebody, you're doing it wrong. I might say to somebody, it would be quicker if you did it this way. <laughs> but I would never say, oh, you're doing it wrong. Because you develop your own style, don't you? Yeah. Anyway, today, yesterday, I, no, was it yesterday? No, Sunday, I started back on my injections again. Not had them for two months yet again. So I'm going through the side effects <coughs> situation that you get, which they don't tell you about. I went to the library yesterday. One of the ladies there said, oh, I'm thinking of asking my GP if I can have that Ozempic or whatever. Ozempic. Might as well be Ozempic. Yeah. I'm going to get it. And I said, mm, be careful. I said, it's not all it's cracked up to me. I've been taking it for many, well, not many years, about two years. It wasn't given to me for weight loss. And to be honest with you, it hasn't. I might have lost two or three pounds on it, but it is not weight loss. I got given it because I'm diabetic and it's to control the blood sugars. People look at me and say, oh yes, but you've lost a lot of weight. I lost the weight before they even put me on the injections. It's hard work losing weight, believe me, trust me. You have to diet and exercise I cannot do, but I do try. But you have to watch your diet. It's not a wonder drug, you know, these celebs that buy it and say, oh, it's so good and all that. They don't tell you the side effects that you get. Because I've had a two-month gap, I'm now getting hit with the side effects again, which is extreme nausea, stomach cramps, to put it politely, the runs, yeah. Um, that's just... Part of it. I mean, the only person who was honest about it, I think, was Sharon Osborne. And she did mention all these side effects and that that she got. And she said she wasn't taking it anymore. But all these other people are like, oh, yes, I've lost pounds and pounds and pounds. If you weigh it up, no, they haven't. When they've lost X number of pounds, they could have lost X number of pounds on a decent diet. That's what I'm being honest about. If I was only taking it for weight loss, I wouldn't take it because the side effects when you start taking it are horrendous. They do settle down. But of course, every time I have a gap because my GP or whatever is prescribing it for obese people instead of the diabetic people, um, I have the side effects come whopping back at me. Yeah? The lady at the library did say, oh, well, you can buy it online. I said, oh, she said it's doctors that prescribe it, you know, doctors, <laughs> as if we believe all these so-called doctors online. I mean, you've all seen them, haven't you? These doctors so-and-so says, put this supplement in your tea or your coffee, sprinkle it on your, so you eat your Weetabix and you're going to lose loads of weight. My brother actually was entitled to use the word doctor in front of his name, but he was a doctor of philosophy, I think it was politics and modern history. So he would not put doctor in front of his name even though he was entitled to do so because he said it's misleading. I'm not a medical doctor. So these doctors online could be a doctor of anything. Doctor of divinity, they could be a doctor, but they're entitled legally to put the word doctor in front of their name. So you think they're a doctor, a medicinal doctor? No, they're not. You know, it just means the title that if you get to a certain level of education, you become a doctor of, like I say, doctor of literature, doctor of whatever, you know. So I said to her, well, I wouldn't do that. 
I said you can waste two or three hundred pound a month because that's what it costs to buy it online. They don't go into your details. You fill it all in. So you could lie through your teeth and say, oh yes, my BMI is such a thing, when actually you're not. You're maybe two or three pounds overweight. They don't check. And also, they, if they're not a proper face-to-face -face GP, they don't know what drugs you take. I mean, my doctor went into all what drugs I take for other reasons, you know, blood pressure drugs, you know, things like that, to make sure that that didn't, you know, this Ozempic stuff didn't quarrel with what we're taking. Whereas if you were to get it online, they don't care. They just want your two, three hundred pounds a month. You know, so, oh gosh, I would be very, very careful <laughs> about taking anything like that. I, I just, I, I don't take it for that reason. And I have not lost weight with it, so. <laughs> It does, to a certain extent, control my craving for sweet things. But I still have to exercise a whole lot of willpower. Because if you watch my Saturday Night Live, you know I do like a chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. But I have weaned myself off one a day <laughs> to one or possibly two a week. Because, you know, cake, biscuits, chocolate was my downfall. So once I started to say, no, Janet, no, you do not want them, that's when I started to lose the weight. Nothing to do with my injections. Anyway, off that subject. I'm on Hobby Horse today. Another thing struck me. I was looking at some old photographs, and you all have a giggle, don't you? Your mum with her natural health glasses on and her funny hairdos and stuff. Well, it might be your, your gran if you're younger. And I was just thinking to myself, I thought, I know things today are like TikTok and digital and maybe there won't be any sort of physical photographs in the future but these sweet young things with the pneumatic lips and the great big fur eyelashes what about their grandchildren you know the fake boobs yeah what about their grandchildren they're going to have hysterics aren't they laughing <laughs> saying did you see what grandma was wearing or what she'd done and I thought, that's a nice thought, isn't it? All these ladies are slaves to fashion, let's just say. I've never been a slave to fashion. I've always ploughed my own furrow, as they say. I've always been a little bit odd. <laughs> in more senses of the word than you know. I've always been a little bit odd in whatever I've worn or whatever I've made. You know, I've never been, if it, it's the latest fashion and everybody's wearing it, I don't, yeah? If somebody said, oh, everybody's got one of these, you might as well tell me something awful because I will go the opposite direction. If everybody's wearing it, I won't. It's like when I see these YouTube videos, oh, everybody's making this cardigan. It's very rare I actually do make that cardigan that shawl, that whatever. The only thing I succumbed to was the virus shawl, only because I thought it was a pretty pattern. But I didn't make hundreds of the things, you know. And it's like this corner to corner blanket that everybody in the world made. I made one, but only because my niece's son wanted one. I hated it. It's the most boring, banal thing I've ever crocheted. Hmm. What am I wearing today? A really weird cardigan today. <laughs> really weird. It was supposed to be done in finer yarn and it would have been better if it had been done in finer yarn because this has turned out chunky. And in actual fact, on the pattern, it was like wispy and delicate. But no, I had to make it in something different, didn't I? But I put it on today because I haven't got the heating on at the minute. And I haven't got my fire lit, so although I need to do one thing or the other because I've just done some laundry. And uh, oh, we're having fun with our electricity and gas supply. They sent us a bill last month, and I think it was £137, which of course they pay. They sent us one this month, and it was a thousand and something, and we went, what? Because my son reads the meter. Because apparently, for some reason or another, our smart meter is not talking to them. It's 
I don't know what he's talking to them. So they sent us a bill for a thousand and something. And we're like, what? We haven't used any more electric. We're very careful. We don't put the tumble dryer on. Turn everything off at the wall when we go to bed. We've nothing on standby, you know what I mean? Um, I'm using my log fire instead of putting the heating on. Um, showers, we just, we're not shower people that stand under the shower for three hours, you know, getting warm. We do quick showers. Um, so, you know, there's no more electric being burnt than usual. Anyway, we queried it. So we got another bill yesterday, £500. <laughs> Still not right. It's still more, the 130 so, so my son's still having to send them another reading saying, luckily he writes it all down. So he sent them like last month's reading, this month's reading, work it out. I mean, I don't know about you, but when these bills say so much a therm and so much for this and so much for that, I can't work it out. I know you've always got your standing charge, which you have to pay anyway regardless of what electric or gas you've used, yeah. You've got to pay that, haven't you? You know, you've got to keep these workmen in a job, haven't you? Something like that, yeah. But it's working out the price per therm or per unit. Oh, you need a degree in mathematics for that. As our Ian said, it makes his brain hurt, you know. <laughs> anyway, we've queried it again, so let's see what they say this time. It's gone from a thousand to five hundred, which, seen as it was one hundred and thirty-seven last month, I don't know. Oh. Smart meters aren't they smart? No, they're not. I wouldn't have had one fitted except it was in the house when we got here, so we couldn't have it taken out. But apparently, this one, because we've changed suppliers, this one doesn't talk to them at the other end. <laughs> oh. God, technology is wonderful. Where would we be? I think we would be a lot better off without it, to be quite truthful. Well, I've got me, me coffee, which is going cold, in my pussycat mug again. My pussycats who are having a drink of tea, which I've got coffee. Not a typical Brit, or English, as I prefer to call myself. I am British, yes, but I'm actually English. And I object to forms that ask me Am I Scottish, Welsh or British? Yeah, Scottish, Welsh, Irish or British? No, Scottish, Welsh, Irish or English? I'm English. Huh? According to the DNA, I've got all sorts of things in my DNA. Which is funny because <laughs> lots of my cousins are now doing their DNA. I did mine years ago, so maybe I'd get a different result now. And I've got like Scandinavian and something or other and all this weird stuff. I think I told you Kurdistan, Afghanistan on my mum's side. People who are like on my mum's side of the family don't have it. <laughs> they don't have And yet another one who's on my mum's side, he has Scandinavian and Sweden and something else on his side. So. I don't think these DNA results are quite accurate, really. I'd like to do it again, but I don't have a spare 70 odd pound going, f you know. And even then, that was on a um, an offer. I think it should have been 100 and something to do your DNA. But, um, hmm. So I don't think I'll be doing it again. I think I'll just wait. <laughs> what I thought should have been in my DNA wasn't. My dad always said we were descended from the Flemish weavers and they came across in 1600 and something or other and he was always adamant that that was in his family tree that we came over we were like Huguenots or whatever came over to escape religious persecution but yet my DNA doesn't show one sign of that so maybe it was one story that got passed down the family tree that wasn't actually true you do have these myths, don't you? If you watch that programme, Who Do You Think You Are? You know, people think that their granddad used to ride on the uh, Scotsman, what's it called? The Flying Scotsman. Only to find out that their granddad never went near the Flying Scotsman. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of things that are, you know, 
I think it was boy George that thought his ancestor was something or other and found out that he knew that person but that person wasn't actually his ancestor it was just a friend of or cousin of whatever I would love to do that but of course you know not being famous it will never get done will it you know my cousin in Scotland is doing the family tree a little bit more in depth than I have ever done um, and he's found out there was we actually my mum was a Butterworth there was a place in Milnro called Butterworth Hall whether at some stage we actually had money I don't know it hasn't drifted down through the generations to little old me that's all I will say <laughs> I did have a lovely subscriber that put on that she had a dream that I was an overnight international um, YouTube superstar or something, whatever it was. I forget the exact wording. <laughs> I mean, I've actually been doing, I think it was Nathan who found out I'd actually started my um, blog on, it would be the 9th of the 2nd, which would have been my dad's birthday. And it was like 11 or 12 years ago I started the, the, the vlog, blog, whatever you want to call it. So I've actually been here. So I'm not exactly an overnight sensation, am I? <laughs> thank you all very, very much for my new subscribers. I always thank my older subscribers. I don't mean older chronologically. I mean, they've been with me a while, yeah. Although quite a few of them. Come on, let's be honest, put your hand up. Quite a few of them are my generation, which, don't knock it, golden oldies we are, yeah. But thank you so much for the new subscribers that I've got, via different forms, via Sheila, via different people. Thank you all. Yeah, it's nice. It's so nice when I get extras. Ooh, <laughs> it makes me feel worthy. Who is it used to say that? I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. It was somebody on the TV. Yeah, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I can't remember, I'm sure somebody will know. <laughs> All I can remember is the David Walliams saying, computer says no. <laughs> yeah, my computer often says no, yeah, says no a lot, yeah. Yeah, I've never got the sort of knack or the algorithm, is that a big word, of actually making money on YouTube. <laughs> There must be some way, but I don't know it, yeah. So if you think I'd do this to finance myself, you're sadly, sadly wrong. Yeah. It might buy me a couple of coffees now. <laughs> I'm debating whether to put Kofi back on, you know, because I did actually get three coffees bought me over the period of about six months. Uh-huh. I may decide to put it back on. I'm always very, very conscious of seeing as though I'm begging, you know? You know, you know the people who say, oh, I'm so short of money, and they beg, 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 and my PayPal's underneath, underneath, just in case you have a hint. My PayPal's not underneath. My email's underneath. <laughs> you want to write to me, my email's underneath, and the little, what did he call it? The box underneath. There's a word for it, isn't there, which I don't know. The something box, the one where you write a little bit underneath, you know, you've got your hashtags in it, haven't you? I always put my email in there. You know, if anybody wants to speak to me, like, personally, and they don't want to put it in the comment box, you know. I usually answer, don't always answer right away, but I usually do answer eventually, yeah. Gives me something to do, yeah. So I'm going to try to do a little bit more knitting with this dud hand, yeah. The reason I've not got me um, support on at the minute is I've um, just had a shower. So obviously you don't wear it in the shower, do you? Mm -hmm. But it will be going on. It's a white hand. <laughs> Bloodless. I actually accidentally stabbed myself with a sharp knife the other day and not one bit of blood came out of my finger. And I'm like, did I cut myself? And I have got the cut mark where I did actually cut myself. So I didn't bleed, which is a bit alarming, isn't it? I thought I might have bled eventually, you know, when it, the blood chugged its way up to the end of my finger. But no, no such luck, yeah. 
And I'm going to go now before the doggies start barking and before my little phone starts going diggly diggly dee and I forgot to turn the notifications off. So obviously nobody loves me today. So how many minutes have I got left? How many minutes have I got left? Two minutes and 36 seconds. So I will say goodbye before it starts ringing. So thank you very much for keeping me company. Don't forget to thumbs up, like and subscribe as they say, and tell all your friends. Well, the ones who crochet, or the ones who don't like nutty old ladies, yeah. Bye for now.